Back in 1979, the scientists discovered something somewhat unusual and something they've never seen before by looking at this particular region that you see right here. They discovered two galaxies that looked practically identical, naming these galaxies twin quasars. And though at first they couldn't really explain this, with many astronomers thinking that these are just unusually similar galaxies to one another, later on they realized that this is a separate image of exactly the same object with the light from this object essentially being lensed, producing two different images with the light from one image reaching us approximately 14 months later compared to the light from the previous image. And the way it works is obviously pretty simple. We have a distant galaxy far away, but also a relatively massive object in front of the galaxy that seems to be in the way. And that produces the gravitational lensing effect which then shifts the image in just the right way with certain mirror images taking a little bit longer to reach us. But I guess you might be asking, why does this even happen? What exactly is going on here? Why do things get lensed by something? In other words, what's causing the bending of the light? Well, this is basically what Einstein proposed over a hundred years ago. It's not that the light is being bent, the light is still going straight. But the space-time itself, the fabric that everything is located in, is being folded in such a way that the light, as it travels across the space-time, ends up a little bit shifted. And so when the light from a distant galaxy is coming toward us and is being emitted under slightly different angles, all of this mass that is going to be passing through or passing close to is going to be folding the space-time just a little bit, producing all of the effects that make it resemble something similar to what you see right here. Now these obviously always differ and it really depends on the mass, it depends on the distribution and several other factors, but in the last few decades so many of these have been discovered with many of them acquiring their own names. This is, for example, what's known as Einstein's cross. Although this is probably the most important and the most famous image of all of this. The original picture from 1919, when Sir Arthur Eddington was able to take the photograph of 1919 solar eclipse, definitively proving that Einstein's ideas about the bending of the light were actually correct. The first official proof of Einstein's theory. But so many more followed afterwards, and even today the scientists still try to prove them, and so far all of them have been correct. But naturally, today this is a pretty well-known phenomenon that's been studied over and over again. As a matter of fact, the first images from the James Webb telescope showed us exactly how powerful this phenomenon can be. Quite a lot of gravitational lensing effects are present here, with many still being studied even today with some scientists going as far as even proposing this phenomenon to be used as a kind of a super powerful telescope. In theory, we could use our sun as a kind of a gravitational lens to observe distant planets by placing the telescope in just the right location. We've actually discussed this in one of the previous videos you can find in the description, but it's actually a very feasible way of looking at distant objects. Although in this case, you would have to be approximately 500 astronomical units away from the sun itself. But more recently, in the last few months, the scientists found even more incredible gravitational lensing effect phenomena, with some being kind of unexpected and really, really cool. With the first one coming from this galactic cluster known as SDSS G1004, with this actually containing the longest ever gravitational lensing image we've ever seen. And in this case, the first image was taken back in 2006 by the Hubble telescope, showing us the quasar that was split in five different images. And in this case, one of the reasons why these images are pretty much all over the place and not in a more circular pattern seems to be because the distribution of mass inside this cluster is not equal at all. It's very chunky, it's very uneven, and because of this the light coming through this cluster takes very different paths. Which also means that by studying these lenses, the scientists can kind of work out the mass distribution inside these clusters, which is of course one of the main reasons they want to study these it will eventually help us understand a little bit more about the mass distribution and of course the mystery of the so-called dark matter. In this cluster though, the distribution of dark matter seems to be mostly inside the inner region. In other words, it's not really spread out as the scientists expected it to be. But I guess more impressively is really the difference between these signals. It takes approximately 6.73 years for the mirror image to be reproduced between some of these images making this the most extreme example of this phenomenon. And so the light that we detect in one of these images is basically going to be the same in about 6.73 years in some other images. And in this case, the scientists were observing this for nearly 14 years, also making this one of the longest such studies. 
But intriguingly enough, they've also noticed, as you can see right there, a supernova. And that's actually what makes these particular studies and these particular lenses so exciting. We discussed something similar in one of the previous videos in the description, but there are also several different supernova that have been detected in gravitational lenses, allowing us to literally see the same image over and over and over again. Or to some extent even see the light from the star before it explodes. Although in this case, because of the distances, the actual data is kind of sparse. And so last year there was one detection of a supernova with a very interesting gravitational lens, but this year Hubble telescope discovered another one. A supernova from 11 billion years ago that contained three separate images of the same event at slightly different times. But more intriguingly, it shows us a very early stage of a supernova not so long after the star exploded, which is actually already quite rare. Normally these events only last for a few hours, maybe a few days, and so seeing this from so far away and seeing this several times is super impressive. In this case, already showing us that this particular supernova changed color over time, with the blue colors being seen during very hot periods, then changing into red colors a few days later. With all of this roughly taking approximately a week, and so the fact that the scientists were able to catch this means that they got super lucky and were looking at just the right time. In this case, the scientists were also able to determine that the original star was very likely a red supergiant that was about 530 times the radius of our sun when it exploded, initiating type 2 supernova. And so this was a very rare, very unusual, and very lucky observation. With this observation being made possible because of the tremendous mass in the cluster known as Abel 370. But at least for now, we don't really know what else is going to be discovered here, because it is a super recent discovery, and the scientists are still analyzing data, trying to see if there's anything else hiding here, and if they can actually find something else. At the moment though, this is already pretty impressive one of the most incredible observations of a lens supernova seen in the last few years. But obviously not the last such observation we're going to be making, because more and more are going to be coming out as the scientists analyze more data using other gravitational lenses as well. As a matter of fact, there are going to be more observations coming from James Webb and very likely observing in different frequencies, so there might be more discoveries coming in the next few months. But until these future discoveries, well, check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description, including relevant studies and relevant links pertaining to this discovery as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.